Good morning everybody and today you find the exiled yellow belly on the trail of a very strange story of a very strange but special young man. Now this morning I'm in North Church and we are going to go and look for the grave of Peter the Wild Boy. Now nobody knows what Peter's real name is as he couldn't talk. He didn't walk either but he scampered around on all fours. Peter was found alone and naked in woods near Hamlin in Germany. Yep, Pied Piper Hamlin. When I say found, it is more likely he was chased as he escaped up a tree and they cut down the tree to catch him. The British King George I had a hunting lodge nearby and was throwing a party when this strange young boy was exhibited to him. So enamoured was the king's daughter-in-law, Caroline of Ansbach, that she had him brought back to England to live in Kensington Palace. The people of London society went crazy for the wild boy, who licked people's hands as a greeting and never stopped giggling. The king, however, despaired of Peter's eating habits and the novelty started to wear off. But Caroline, she still had a soft spot for him and arranged for a doctor or Buffnot to oversee his education. This did not work out well, but they did manage to get him to walk on two feet. He became attached to a lady in waiting called Mrs. Titchborn, and it was decided that she should assume his care for an annual fee. She in turn took him to live at a farm in Berkhamsted owned by a Mr. Fenn, who she visited in the summers for £30 a year. While at the farm he wore a heavy leather collar, but because Peter had a tendency to wander off, on the collar was an inscription that read, Peter the wild man from Hanover. Whoever bring him to Mr. Fenn at Berkhamsted, Hertfordshire, shall be paid for their trouble. When Mr. Fenn died, his brother Thomas took Peter to live at Broadway Farm, North Church, where he lived very happily, eating onions and drinking gin, and watching fires burn, and sitting out on starry nights. He seems to have been loved by a succession of tenant families at Broadway Farm, who cared for him, and him them, especially Farmer Brill, his final carer, who he do doted on and followed everywhere. When Farmer Brill died suddenly, Peter refused food and pined away. He died a few days later, on the 22nd of February 1785, aged in his 70s. And as we walk down, back down this little slope to outside the main doors of the church, St Mary's in North Church, we will see we're coming up to the grave of Peter the Wild Boy. As usual, every day flowers are laid anonymously for Peter. So, rest in peace, Peter. A very strange but nice story. So, I thought I'd just take a quick scan of this lovely church, St. Mary's at North Church. Uh, where well, I've just met a very, very nice lady, very informative, told me about her husband who does a talk on Peter the Wild Boy. And uh, he, on the second Saturday of July at the North Church Fate, does in fact tell people about the story of Peter the Wild Boy and um, hopefully I'm going to come over and uh, 
have a bit of a chat to him and try and find out more because he has done a very, very interesting thing about Peter just as you go in the door that you can read up all about him. Uh, and it really is uh, quite amazing, the story of the lad. So, uh, anyway, I just thought I'd put that in. So, now here I am. I'm actually inside St. Mary's at North Church. Because while I was sitting, I found the door open, and while I was sitting down, having a bit of a look around, I actually came across in this recess over here, the collar of Peter the Wild Boy. And here it is, over here. The actual collar that I was telling you about earlier with the inscription on it is kept in this recess, in this little glass box, in the St. Mary's Church. So that was a fantastic find, and I am so pleased to have found that. In this lovely, very quiet church that is open to the public, but it's absolutely nobody about. But that's such an interesting find, and I'm so happy to find it. I'm just taking a sweep of the church, so you can see it. So quiet in it, considering there's a very busy main road outside. It is so quiet. It's a much bigger village, North Church, than I, I imagined. I presume it's a town. But, yeah, very nice church. And just wanted to give you a little walk around to see it. And I know there's a lot of people out there that are really interested in English churches, etc. And this is a really nice one. I'll try and find out a bit more history of the place. But it, uh, it really is a beautiful place. So I hope you enjoyed that little little tour of it. Now, once again, while I was looking around, I came into this uh, lovely part of the church with this beautiful stained glass window here. And underneath is a picture of Peter the Wild Boy. Now, that's the young lad who was down in the right corner there. It's a painting by William Kent um, and John R. Buffnot is on the left with the walking stick. That was his teacher. And it was painted during the reign of King George I and it now still hangs in Kensington Palace. So that was another interesting find um, on my trip around St Mary's of North Church. Well, I really hope you enjoyed that uh, little story. And if you did, please give my channel a thumbs up, subscribe, and ding the little bell, which notifies you of all new episodes. It all helps, apparently. I know nothing about algorithms, etc., but I'm sure it's all to do with them. Anyway, now it's the hard task of finding a full English breakfast in North Church and a builder's mug of tea. So see you again soon. Thank you.